the Lord has been said by the Minister of Justice, and rightly so. All I want to add is to say the world and the leadership of individual countries, Africa included, leaders of today must gather courage to do what is right. They must not hide behind past events. We have had this issue before us, the death panel before us for a long time. And some leaders in this country, on our continent and the world, would say, it's okay, let it remain there as a deterrent, because after all, we have not executed some people in the last 20 years or so. That's not good enough. We must gather courage as leaders to do what is right and to do it for humanity. So for me, for us in this government, for me, it was a non-issue. It was a question of the process. And today, we have this lunch on to celebrate the decision that this government took. I want to thank my colleagues on the cabinet table and to thank my colleagues in Parliament, our colleagues in Parliament, for doing what is right, for doing this for humanity. Thank you to the citizens of Zambia for allowing us, we are only your servants after all, for allowing us to do what we have done for humanity, to remove the death penalty from our laws. I remember people debating that, no, no, you can't do that without a constitutional amendment. Many did not even read our laws, including the constitution. But that's not the issue for today. The issue today is to celebrate the decision, our decision as a country. Please don't credit this president, don't credit this cabinet and credit this government. Credit the people of Zambia. I repeat, credit the people of Zambia for doing what is right. So thank you to the people of Zambia. I must say something, a little bit of something here. You heard the figures, numbers of people were executed, those who were not. I can bet as I stand here that some of those who were executed never committed crimes. That led them to being executed. How do I know? I know. Because I know. I was on a death row myself. Technically, treason is a death row. I was a treason detainee with five others. And I'm looking at someone else who was also in treason in this audience. I know that person did not commit a crime of treason, but was on the death row. Definitely, I can vouch that the six of us never committed any treason. We never planned to overtake a government by illegal means. We never, not even a thought of it, never, ever. But we were there in jail in Mukobe countries. If we were in that situation, and it depends on the prosecution, if the prosecution had a stronger lawyer than our lawyers, and the trial went on, we could have been convicted by one of these judges. It's true, <laughs> isn't it? It's very true. Frightening to some people. But for me, I was a happy detainee because I knew I never committed that offense. But I could have been hung by the neck until pronounced dead. 
And I found that this is an opportunity to end this death penalty because others before us could have been killed, yet they never committed a crime. Think about that. Think about that. So let's do what is right when we've been given an opportunity to provide leadership in the church, in the civil society, in last, in the ministry, as chiefs, traditional leaders, you can condemn we the subjects. You even chase us from your chief dogs and banish us. So sometimes we reflect on these things before we do them. Because sometimes we are given wrong information and we act on it. I know one of the criticisms I get is that in the guise of metho being methodical, I am slow. It's deliberate. A lot of reports, those vice presidents will tell you, this vice president will tell you, a lot of reports are brought to us. Those who bring the reports to us know that they are lying to us, but they bring them anyway. And if you act in haste, you are going to make mistakes. It is important in leadership to have a big chest. Yes, you can't question us of being indecisive. No, 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 no. The two are different. But doing what is grave, taking a decision on a grave matter requires a sober mind, a thoughtful mind. Sometimes you put a file away and then I will look at it tomorrow. Tomorrow you look at it the following day, you put it away again and say, no, no, let me look at it again. Is this what I'm reading? What this chap wants me to do? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it. So it's not enough <laughs> to say we didn't hang the people. So we must live with this sentence on our books, statutory books. No. So we're very delighted that today we're having this lunch on with our international colleagues, local colleagues, and also for me to simply say, to see a number of you here, General Mianda included, today, <laughs> to see owner of Gabinella here, to see Honorable Mumba to see my brother Saki there. That in itself is good. That's what the country must be. There are issues with issues against each other, but there are issues we must converge. And I want to invite and recognize the sixth Republican president, wherever he is that the times the country needs you doesn't matter what we feel about each other we must be together doing this <laughs> we also appreciate that you could be busy where you are that too is appreciated and respected i think i've said enough except to say minister of justice the removal of the defamation of the president, criminal defamation of the president, is equally important. I must confess here, this is one decision that I carried and overruled cabinet. Because many were unhappy about it. Why? Because they say the president is being insulted every day. And after all, secondly, this is an old law. Even in other countries, presidents are protected. My answer was that that's the very reason we should remove it. The president who is insulted most, let's remove it and pull the carpet away from those that are using this law and find pleasure in it. Can you see that? The victim must reflect and be the one who can actually solve the problem that's long-standing. It depends on how your mind works. 
honestly speaking. So we're very delighted that we've taken away the criminal defamation of the president. The onus is on colleagues who like abusing a president as an office. Let's debate issues. Let's differ on issues. Because my ears will remain big. That's how God made it. It won't change my ears. No matter how much you say HH is big ears, it doesn't change anything. Let's talk about the efficacy of, if you like, the fight against corruption. Let's talk about that. Why would somebody support the fight against corruption? Because takes away resources from children in school, desks, retirement benefits, all of that. So we're very delighted to to picky backy on this lunch and to say we're very happy to have removed the criminal defamation of the president. And this journey will continue looking at laws that are kick, I dare say here, including commercial laws. The laws around tendering are too winded. 18 months to go through just environmental assessment, to go through this and that. The world is not waiting. We need to reconstruct our economy like yesterday. The tender laws are too winded. And we'll be addressing this. So it's not just this area of death penalty, criminal defamation of the president, but also commercial laws, economic laws that are inhibiting acceleration of economic growth, investment. So I want to say to the people of Zambia and to the world, it's a total package will be reviewed and we'll do it in good faith. We mean well for this country. Compliments of the season. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, God bless us all. Thank you very much.